Welcome back to Tartsen in Slovenia for round three of the 2022 ICF Canoe Slalom World Cup. We're here at this iconic venue in uh, the outskirts of Ljubljana, the capital city on the River Sava here. As uh, we watch the sharp end of racing and we're into the kayak finals time. We have the women's kayak up first, the top 10 competitors from the semi-finals will race it out in reverse order of their performance in those semis. And then we'll have the men's kayak final up after that. Well, good conditions for racing. Slightly overcast, which is probably better for the athletes. Uh, no wind at all. And uh, a warm day here in Slovenia. We've got low water levels and a shortened course here on the Tartsen course. 21 gates, eight upstream gates to make up for the shortened course. And uh, well, this is the challenge that the athletes will have to face as they uh, go for gold here in this third World Cup of the season. Here's the format of racing. Women's kayak final up very shortly. But uh, let's just hear from one of our experts and give you a bit of an insight from one of the pros. I'm Martina Wegman from the Netherlands and I competed at the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games. The first thing you learn when you go kayaking is how to hold your pedal. And the easiest way to go is you pick it up, you put it on your head and it should be a 90 degree angle. And that's the position how you hold your pedal. Some people prefer to hold it a little bit tighter. It means you have a little bit more leverage on your blade. And some people prefer to hold it a little bit wider and it means you use a little bit more your back and rotation while you put in your stroke. So it's a really personal preference and I would recommend to try it out, have some fun and see what feels best for you. Well, great to get a bit of insight from one of our pros as we now focus in on this women's kite final. I'm Andy Maddock and I'll be here alongside you and uh, with me is Noemi Fox of the Australian team and silver medalist from the Oceania Championships in 2022 in kayak and canoe. Welcome back. Thank you. I'm super excited to be here for what is looking like a very intense um, semi-final in the women's kayak. As we just saw, Ricardo Funk, Olympic champion and world champion is missing at this race. Um, due to COVID, but we still have a, a really great lineup of some, some big names. Here's the start list. We go in reverse order of the semi finals. Mallory Franklin was fastest by quite a margin in the semi finals, but uh, they all start from zero and it is delivery time here. Of course, uh, Jessica Fox goes off third from last for Australia and uh, she was the winner of the first two World Cups of the season and lying in the overall top spot and a couple of names missed out. Teresa Fisser over at the Czech Republic who was lying second in the overall standings missed out on the final along with Stephanie Horn and Claudia Spolinska, some big names. But we are getting underway. The first of our 10 competitors, Victoria Us of Ukraine sets off down this 21 gate course. Yeah, Vicky Urs is a very consistent and strong paddler, super flat boat. Just uh, a bit of a penalty to start off this final run, hitting gate one. What we saw in the semi-final was that there were a lot of penalties and, and if you can keep it clean and, and tidy and weave your way through the gates, that's definitely the key to success. Yes, in this shortened course, a real uh, impact. Any penalty is on your, your run in. Even on a normal slalom course, then trying to absorb a two-second penalty can be quite tough. 
but the shorter the course, the more significant that is on your run. But Victoria looks like she's set off well, apart from that touch on the top. Yeah, weaving her way super nicely. This is definitely a shorter course than we used to in the, the normal World Cup circuit. Also, normally we race on six ups, and this is the first time we've had an eight up race. So definitely hard on the arms and the keys to keep the boat super flat inside pole. And, and she's uh, managing her way down the second half of the course pretty well and, and this is I think the key money making area. Oh, well that's good insight there and uh, it seems to be as well the further down the course you get the less help you get from the white water the more the physical demands set in. Yeah definitely physical you can see all those grimaces it's sticky water it's swirly water and you just want to charge down as much as you can while staying clean so definitely a, a very challenging and, and technical course this is. Well Victoria is safely through the course now sprints to the finish and will stop the clock 97.58 that includes a two second penalty on the first gate of the course and uh, well a respectable run we saw the fastest raw time from the semi-finals was 91.28 so uh, it's a little bit down on that, but uh, it is in the mix, and it's certainly the one to chase for now. Yeah, Vicky's an impressive paddler. She's always there, always consistent, and, you know, she's been away from home for a very long time since uh, February, so definitely hard for her to manage this period and, and show up and be consistent and, and improve throughout the World Cup series. So showing great form for the lead-up to the World Championships. There's World Championships in Augsburg in Germany in uh, just over a month's time and uh, well, we'll uh, again be uh, racing on a course that's uh, a little bit boily, unpredictable, swirly nature of the course and how being reactive to the, the run and how it unfolds at the time is going to be critical to a medal winning performance. Yeah, definitely. And, and Vicky is one of um, six paddlers in this field that actually does kayak, canoe and extreme as well. So these ladies are definitely getting their practice in in the lead up to their other events. Well, two Slovenians in this start line as well in this 10 boat final, which is uh, popular amongst the Slovenian crowd. But next to start, Anna Satila of Brazil. Great to see Anna making the final again. That's three finals on the trot. She's finished sixth, eighth, and uh, now into this final. Can she go better? Can she get on the podium? Well, it's all about delivery on this run. Yeah, Anna will be hungry for a podium. This is her third World Cup final this season. She's definitely more of a, compared to Vicky Urs, more of a dynamic and, and fast-paced, fast-stroke-paced um, paddler. And uh, I think she's got the muscle she needs to carry her way down to the bottom half of the course. Well, she's lying fourth overall in the standings after two races in these World Cup standings. We'll, of course, race here. And then we'll take a bit of a break from the World Cup. And races four and five are at the end of August, beginning of September, when we crown the World Cup champion of 2022. So far, this is a really good run from Anna. You can see she's waiting when she needs to wait to pass those gates clean and then putting in the right strokes. Big cord on that seven and um, backing up to make through gate eight. And we'll see a lot of change of plans and the key is to really adapt where you can and, and keep it clean because that is what matters. Well, she's cutting the lines through 14, 15, now into 16. Holds the boat speed quite well. And uh, she is though now chasing the time set by Victoria Urs of Ukraine. Yeah, review on gate 14 was very tight, so we'll see what the outcome is of that. It is important to keep your head fully in the gate, especially on these tight staggers. Yeah, and the uh, judges have a number of different camera angles, particularly on the upstream gates, that they can look at um, to just review the penalties. And into second place, Anna Shatila currently showing a clean run. There is that review, as uh, Noemi was just saying, on gate 14. 98.18 uh, and uh, well it's always Anna's always got a smile on her face hasn't she yeah definitely um, I think she's super proud to have integrated three out of three World Cup finals this season it's definitely great paddling it's not a great camera angle there on gate 14 um, it's definitely a hard course to fully express yourself and I think that's what a lot of the paddlers will be frustrated with today it's hard to get those strokes that you want to get in and you have to wait a little bit and it's very niggly, so you just have to be patient and, and keep the boat moving as, as much as you can. So Victoria Urs leading in the early stages of this 10-boat women's kayak final. 
And uh, well, the review has awarded a 50 second penalty to Anna on the FK14, and that will be judged as the whole head wasn't inside the holes. And you need the whole head and at least part of your boat in at the same time. So it's uh, still three finals from three races for Anna Satila, but it's not going to be a podium today. Here we go, super excited to see Eva, the first of two Slovenians in the final, and the crowd is definitely excited as well. Great out, um, presence out there in Tartan today on the Riverbank. 2019 a world champion goes for gold here in Tartan. She sets off and uh, low into gate one, not the ideal line, but uh, she'll be able to control that. Yeah, she still carried the boat super smoothly in that drop and didn't even get her hair wet at all. And even in this cross, I mean, she's probably done it a million times, but to deliver on the day is always something else. And, and so far, it, it's looking pretty good. Well, uh, packed crowd here in this amphitheater and three and a half seconds up on the top. Ava Tursel is certainly building into this run. Yeah, she's got great rotation. Oh, gosh. Like we saw with Anna Satilla, that's definitely not promising. We need the full head in the gate, and what a shame to get a 50-second penalty on what was looking like an incredible run for Eva. Yeah, tricky. It's uh, hard without the replay. We'll get a replay, no doubt, but it uh, looked like if it was whole head, there may not have been any boat, but certainly 50-second penalty, now a two-second penalty, and, uh, well, it's not going to challenge for the podium today here. But uh, you can see she is still up on the split time. Yeah, shame to see this run derailing. And I think it will be a great indicator of the, the fast runs that will come later on. So the world champion of 2019 now paddling it out. Uh, had a disappointing Olympic Games last year and uh, hasn't quite found that form. But going into the world championships, racing on a home course, she'll be pleased to make the final. So... Stops the clock at a time of 92.70, raw time. So she's got the pace, but uh, 52 seconds of penalties. And at the moment, sitting in second place. Victoria Urs leading after the first three paddlers down for Ukraine. What do you think it's going to take in terms of time to, to win this race, Naomi? Look, Tartsen, you, you never know. It's, it's full of surprises. And I think the key is to make it look effortless like Eva did in those first two gates. That's when you know the boat is moving and the boat is fast. We saw a 91 from Mallory Franklin and a 92 from um, Cherelle from France. So I think, you know, anywhere between those two times will be a very solid performance. But it's the final and anything can happen. Well, here's the move. This is gate eight. Now you can see no boat and uh, not really the whole head either. So a 50 second penalty awarded for Eva there. And uh, after such a strong start, just that one mistake. And you just see it was the water pushing on the edge of her boat. The swirly water just pushes her sideways out of the gate line. Yeah, very tough work out there. And, and next up, we'll have another Eva from Slovenia, Eva Alina Hoseva. So this is her first World Cup final. And I'm sure she'll be excited to race in front of her home crowd. Yeah. Well, only second place at the moment for Tursal of Slovenia. But yes, here is the second of two Slovenians in this women's kayak final. Eva Alina Hotjeva, just 20 years old. And, uh, well, I would expect her to be racing without fear here. Yeah, she's got a lot of racing experience doing both extreme canoe and kayak. So she's accumulated a lot of runs up her sleeve and a bit low in gate one and gate three. But we'll see how she can hold it together. We know the bottom half of the course is where there's a lot of time to gain. And so far, she's up on the split, so it's actually a pretty good start. So she's a two-time junior world championship medalist, now starting to make her name in the senior ranks. And... Uh, yeah, as you say, she's holding this together. It's all about building into this run. You can't win the race at the top, but you can lose it. Definitely, and it's super exciting to see her stay this composed and really you know, adapt to the course and, and handle the pressure. You can see that she's quite at the back. That's her natural style, leaning backwards. Some other people like, you know, Mickey Oz, super stable and at the front. So we're seeing lots of different styles. And so far, even with the penalty, she's up on the split. So with this is a really good run coming together. 
And she's holding it together. Just one more upstream to go. That's gate 21, but there's this really sticky section through 19 and 20, and you can just see how hard she's working. Yeah, the lactic acid is definitely building up in the arms. Eight upstream is not what we're used to, but she's having a really good run and holding it together, sprinting to the finish line, and will be just behind. So slips into second place. That uh, touch, the two-second penalty picked up on gate 13. I think it was a touch of the, uh, the paddle. And, uh, well, it is still Victoria Urs sitting in the top spot after four boats down in this 10-boat women's kayak final. And 97.58 still the time to beat. Yeah, great first final in kayak in the Senior World Cup for Eva Alina. And in front of her home crowd, I'm sure it's super special. And she'll be gearing up now for the C1 semi-finals tomorrow as well as the extreme time trial. You can follow the one that live at Planet Canoe tomorrow. We have the women's, uh, women's canoe and the men's canoe semi-finals. They start at 9 o'clock Central European time. The finals at 11.30 Central European time and extreme kayak head-to-head -head racing 4.30 Central European time tomorrow. But all eyes now on this women's kayak final here live from Tartsen in Slovenia. And we have Ukraine leading ahead of Slovenia, then Slovenia. Good to see the grandstand packed as uh, the fifth boat now will start the run. And it is Colleen Charel of France, the under-23 world champion from last season. And she was very fit, fast in the uh, semi-final and uh, had a penalty. Can she go do a clean run here in the final? Yeah, the only paddler to make it through with plus four. So she had the second fastest time. She's world champion under-23 on this course. I think she knows it pretty well and quite tied into gate three. And she knows it, definitely not taking the risk to take a 50-second penalty. So there she's just making the decision for the judges and taking away that uh, ability to do that. But it would have cost her on the clock. But look, still 1.1 yeah, up, on still up on the split. she's still up on the split. She's such a strong paddler. And if she can hold it together and be clean, she can definitely deliver something that's pretty good. That's well, amazing that she's uh, recirculated on the upstream gate three and still in the mix. Now this is the critical section. This is where she was very good in the semi-finals. So plus 10 on that upstream, we mustn't have seen it. It's derailing a tiny bit, but you know what? She's got such a strong posture and, and strong technique as well to, to deliver the rest of the run. Well, she's still, despite that penalty, our virtual race leader, but uh, that uh, lead is being whipped away. And Victoria Urs of Ukraine looking uh, well like she may well hold on to the race lead at the halfway point in this women's kayak final but it's not over until the finish line yeah and it's really hard because you know there's not much time to really put the strokes that you want to put in and it's super niggly but it might be enough to take the lead oh Just it's going to be super tight colleen chahel of france goes into second place and uh, well it was a very respectable run considering it had a paddle back on the upstream gate three and a penalty and there's a name to watch Cheryl of France for the future but it is Victoria Urs of Ukraine who is leading the race at the halfway point in this women's kayak final ahead of Colleen Cheryl of France and Eva Alina Hocheva of Slovenia but uh, a 50 second penalty has just come on on the upstream gate three for and uh, well that moves her down the order into fifth place yeah she she went back for it so i'm sure there'll be a review um from her team lead but you know first world cup first final as well and such a strong paddler i think it really shows the depth of the french system there are so many really great paddlers out there and all have something that they want to show on the world stage so um yeah great great paddling from this under 23 world champion in the finals uh, I had a good run it's not enough for the medals for sure but uh, I'm happy to uh, to push more to be uh, to show my b best and to race with such a strong girls you, you say it's not good enough for the 
Yeah, but uh, I know time that was in the semifinals, uh, and uh, it's uh, far away from the medal my time. Well, I'm going to be more optimistic than you. Just hang in there. I think you'll get there. Well done, Vicky. Thank you. Thank you. So there is our race leader at the halfway point in this women's kayak final. We're live from Tartsen in Slovenia. We have a packed grandstand here. Uh, most of them, to be fair, are probably here to watch Peter Kauser in the men's kayak final. But uh, the Slovenian crowd will be very, very enthusiastic at the fact that they have uh, two boats in the podium spots at the moment. But as Victoria said, then uh, the door is wide open, isn't it? Yeah, look, it's a bit of a messy start in terms of penalties to this uh, K1 women final out of World Cup. And I hope we'll be seeing a lot more clean runs and competitive times to that 91, which was set by Mallory in the semi final. But you never know. And um, we'll see what the last five girls are capable of delivering. Well, there is the crowd and uh, those uh, boo boo zailers, is that what people call them? And they're certainly uh, starting to, to warm up here already. But uh, Victoria Urs, 97.58. And as you say, Noemi, it's uh, 91.27 was the fastest time we had in the semi finals. So some uh, very uh, strong performers still to come and uh, medals very much still up for grabs. We've got uh, Mallory Franklin, Karina Kunler. Jessica Fox, all with uh, multiple titles amongst them, and then Evie Liebfarth of the United States of America. She is our next starter, and uh, she herself is the junior world champion of 2021, one on this course. Yeah, so she also knows this course really well and uh, a very dynamic and fast stroke paced paddler like we saw in the semi-final always keeps her boat moving and pretty flat and I think that is really key for this long course. Yeah, she has a very different style to some people, very attacking style and well that can help if you're going to stay in control on the white water. Yeah, even in spaces where you think there's no room to put in some strokes, she definitely puts in a lot. So uh, she keeps the boat moving a bit stuck on, on those few staggers and even in that upstream. So lost a bit of time there. But we saw that she had a, a quick bottom section in the semi-final, and that definitely is where we can make up time. Well, she's definitely giving it her all here, but she has picked up that two-second penalty on the downstream gate four. So while she is up, well, in touch with the split time of Victoria Oars, we know that the, there's some fast boats still to come. And uh, that spin on 11 to 12, whilst it was tidy, won't be the fastest way of doing that move. Yeah, and um, a review on gate eight as well. It was quite tight with the head, so we'll see what the judges come up with that after they look at a few angles. But it is a very niggly course, and that's what we're seeing with these penalties as well. It's hard to keep it composed, clean and fast all the way down. Well, I imagine even if you've delivered a world-class run here, it won't feel like uh, you've enjoyed it. Yeah, definitely. I think it's it's just so niggly, so tight, and, and really hard to express yourself. So they don't really know how they're going, really, until they cross the finish line. So just outside, into second place for A.V. Leapfarth of the United States of America. At the moment, just a two-second penalty showing on gate four, but there is a review going on on the downstream gate eight. But there is our race leader for Ukraine, Victoria Urs, guaranteed a top five finish. Yeah, which is very good, really strong. And I think Evie will be kicking herself for that touch because that could have set um, a quick a quick time of reference. So that is the gate that's being looked at. Gate eight there are our video judges, the chief judge there in the middle. And uh, well, that one angle was probably inconclusive. And uh, well, Again, not sure there's much information around a 50 there and um, penalty removed. Well, I'm not sure it was actually put on as such. So uh, that's good news for Avi that uh, she provisionally holds on to her second place. 97.90 total, just behind Victoria Us of Ukraine, our race leader, and ahead of Ava Alina Pocheva of Slovenia. Yeah, it's always a bit nerve-wracking when you see that asterisk next to your name, but I think what the girls are showing is that you can't stop until the finish line because you never really know the outcome. Next up for the Czech Republic, Barbara Valikova sets off. She goes for gold here in Tartsen. 
Yeah, and I think the floor is a little bit open for these last remaining ladies. So uh, they'll just want to go out there, deliver what they're capable of delivering, stay clean, and, and that could be enough to, to get a medal. But here in Tartson, uh, you almost at the top, you feel very removed from the competition. Is do you have any idea of what's going on down on the course? I think it's quite nice to start in a little bit of silence and then go down and, and enter the world stage. And um, so far, she's having a really clean run, and it would be great to see another Czech paddler from kayak on the podium. So far, we've seen Teresa Fisarova and Amy Hilgatova, two different Czech paddlers, make it to the podium. So. We'll see what she can do, but so far she is up on the split, so this is a, a pretty solid start. Yeah, no, another penalty shown on gate six, so that will have eaten into the advantage that she had on the top section. And now into this tricky little 11 12 sequence, goes for the spin on 11. Now she's got to be tight into 13 and get the exit. Yeah, kept the boat running quite a bit, so this might be in touch. So let's watch her as she goes through gate 16. A little bit sticky. Boat speed is critical there in terms of the clock. Yeah, down on the time. And, and that's where we saw quite a few people lose a bit of time getting stuck in the eddy when they go for that, that direct move. So there's definitely so many places down here where you can gain or lose time and you really have to grip the whole way and, and sprint to the finish. Well, it's good upstream on the final gate, the eighth gate on this uh, course and crosses the line 99.91 into fourth place for Barbara Valikova. So it slipped away at the bottom of the course. And, uh, well, it is still Victoria Urs of Ukraine, who, there she is, our race leader with three to go, guaranteed a top four finish. And, well, three big names to come in this women's kayak final. Yeah, three very big names, and, and hopefully they can put on a show for us. But Victoria Urs, not hopeful, but still clinging on, and it could be enough to, to snatch a bronze, a silver, or even a gold medal. You just you never know on this course, and you just have to hold it together until the finish line, because anything is possible in Tartan. Yeah, Victoria really showing herself as a contender. She made the Olympic final last year. She was 13th in Prague in the first World Cup of the season, then 7th last weekend in Krakow. So uh, a great build into the World Championships for her in Augsburg in Germany in just over a month's time. Well, now we're going to gear into the last three paddlers, the top three paddlers of this World Cup. And the next to start, you could argue, is the greatest of all time. The GOAT, Jessica Fox for Australia, sets off in this World Cup final. This top section was where she had a bit of a problem in the semi-final and uh, no problems though this time. I'm not sure we need to argue that she's the greatest of all time but this is definitely not the start that she wanted with a touch on gate one but I think she has quite a record of, of winning with a touch on gate one um, but solid start and, and fixed up the mistakes she just needs to, to keep it clean and, and find the flow. Well, yes, as she comes now into the upstream six, she still has nearly three seconds the advantage, which is good, but she's got to think of those paddlers still to come because we know there's quite a big chunk of time out there compared to the fastest time in the semi-final. It's a good middle section coming together though, for Fox. Yeah, solid in those ups and really gaining a lot of time. This is one of the critical moves, and she's done that pretty well, just waiting like she did in her semi-final. I'm not sure if she knows the penalties of the other athletes, but, you know, squeezed her neck in, and, and that's definitely what we want to see. So already Jessica has a win from each of the first two World Cup races. She's held on to the advantage two and a half seconds, but she's got to work hard on the bottom part of the course if she's going to shut the door on those still to come. Yeah, she's, look, you, you can tell she's really frustrated and not putting the run that she wants to put down, but she just needs to keep it composed and it could be enough to take the race lead. Well, it's a good upstream gate to finish. And uh, remember, 91 was the fastest time from the semi-finals. She crosses the clock into the race lead, 94.24. And the world number one does take the race lead with two boats still to go. But uh, you were right, no, I mean, it wasn't the, the run that she, she wanted. Yeah, definitely not. And she was actually sick in between the semi and the final, so not the rest that she wanted either. But to be able to put down a good run and, and battle through the lactic acid and, you know, just 
put down a medal winning run, I think she's relieved and, and ready for some rest. <laughs> well, the winner of the first two World Cups is guaranteed a medal here in Tartson. We just don't know what colour it is. So uh, almost certainly she will leave Tartson still leading the World Cup standings, the title overall that she's held for the last three times it's been staged. And I think this is quite a frustrating final for all of the girls that have gone down. They haven't been able to express themselves like they wanted to. They haven't found the rhythm and their flow, but that's also what this course is. And I think if you can go down and feel good, I, you've probably done a gold medal winning run. Well, that's great insight there. And uh, some great slow-mo shots here of Jessica Fox, our race leader. With two boats to go, Jessica Fox leading for Australia ahead of Victoria Us of Ukraine and Avi Liebfarth of the United States of America. Yeah, look, it's an open floor for Kunli and Franklin and uh, we'll see if they can challenge that time of 94. On course now, Karina Kunler of Austria, the two-time world champion, two-time European champion and uh, very capable of taking gold here today. But it is all about delivery now on this run. And we've seen so much action and little penalties just creating problems for these athletes. I think uh, they just need to not take risks and go in the middle of the gates. And that could be enough. That was quite tight on that outside pole. And, and you know, I think she's going to try to play it as safe as she can, knowing that that's all that she really needs to do. Marina will be uh, very familiar with this course. It's not that far away from her, it's quite local. And uh, she has traditionally done very well performing on this course. So into the upstream gate 10. Yeah, getting a little bit stuck. You could see that she didn't manage to jump over that stopper and, and it kind of killed the speed. And now a touch on that and doing a, a spin that was very unintentional. It's derailing a little bit for Karina. It is indeed, because she's now down on the split time by quite some margin. We'll wait and see exactly how much, but uh, 5.68. And uh, suddenly, Jessica Fox is uh, able perhaps to take a little bit of a breath again at the bottom of the course, the race leader. And now it's about damage limitation for Karina Kunler of Austria. Can she still get in? and uh, slot into a podium position. Yeah, tough work. The time is definitely slipping away and, and the water's kind of being you know, used against her. She's struggling to find the flow and a bit of a battle out there in the, in the final. And it's not going to be in sixth place. That's a surprise for Karina Kunla of Austria. And uh, well, that means that Victoria Urs is guaranteed a medal here for Ukraine. Jessica Fox guaranteed a silver medal at least for Australia. There we have the leader, wearing number one, Jess Fox for Australia and Victoria Urs. I would uh, love for Mallory Franklin to put down one clean run for us in this women's kayak final. It's been um, a very niggly and, and tight final. You can see that they were all kind of had battles of their own in, in each of their runs and it's just such a, a tough and technical course. And uh, yeah, it's, it's just been really hard out there today. Well, here we see this is where the problem started really for Karina. She uh, not only took the penalty, but a significant time loss there on uh, gate 12, run into 13, and then just she lost the rhythm. And uh, as you say, on a course like this, as soon as you lose the rhythm, the time just just ebbs away. Yeah, definitely hard to catch up on those mistakes and, and not let them accumulate. But Mallory Franklin from Great Britain had an incredible semi-final run. She's such a composed and steady and flat boat paddler. I really hope she can, you know, go out and deliver the run that she wants to deliver today. Mallory Franklin now goes for gold here in Tarts and she has to uh, just adjust her line on the run into gate one, but uh, no big drama on the top part of the course, but she's washed off the back and low into three. Yeah, significant time loss, but she did in 91. So if she can, you know, catch up on the bottom of the course like she did in the semi-final, that could be enough. She did well not to uh, take a pre-touch on uh, gate three actually there, and she's still up on the split time on the top section. Whether she'll know that, that's the key thing, isn't it? She's just got to stay composed. Quite tight on gate eight, like we've seen a lot of other paddlers do. So we'll wait and see what the judges' response to that. She's not, you know, she's a bit frazzled in her strokes compared to her semi-final, where she could really just put in those key strokes. But this is um, a pretty good finish 
in this middle section. Yeah, she's very on the edge, isn't she? She was so, so composed in the semi-final. She's uh, a little bit up against it. There is a review on gate eight at the moment, but just that two-second penalty showing on gate seven at the moment. Down on Fox of Australia as she comes out of 18. And this is a really strong finish. She probably had that best section that we've seen so far, so this could be in line for a medal-winning performance. Well, let's see. The time to beat for the race win is 94.24. That's Jessica Fox of Australia. She's going to be outside of that. But uh, is she going to be in enough of a position for a podium and into second place provisionally for Mallory Franklin? Uh, there is still a review on gate eight for Mallory Franklin of Great Britain. But provisionally, that's gold for Jessica Fox. Three gold medals on the trot in this World Cup series. Yeah, I think uh, the asterisk next to the name is always a nerve-wracking wait. So we'll we'll see what the official results are. And um, you can see Jess getting a little bit emotional there. I think she's just proud to have been able to deliver and hold it together in what was a, a really tough and hard final for all of the finalists out there. So here we see Mallory Franklin. That's gate seven. She picked up a two-second penalty. No doubt about that. This is gate eight now. This is what the judges are reviewing to determine whether the whole head was definitely a bit of boat. So it is all about whether the whole head is in the gate line. And there's another angle on that move. Yeah, well, we saw, I think it was Evie Leifard do a, a similar trajectory through that gate. So uh, we, yeah, it, it's, hard to, it's hard to know, really. So the video judges will be looking at that from a variety of different angles. And uh, then we'll make a final decision. But provisionally, Jessica Fox takes the win here for Australia ahead of Mallory Franklin of Great Britain and Victoria Us of Ukraine gets the bronze medal. But there is our race winner, three from three. What a preparation for the World Championships. And the asterisk has been removed to Mallory Franklin in second. And I think we'll listen to Jess. Well, Jess, tell me how you're feeling right now. Oh, I am in disbelief. I'm just so pleased that I was able to put down that run in the final, even though it felt awful from start to finish. It was, um, it's a very special win today, very special. Tell me why. Uh, well, I, I have been feeling a bit sick all morning throwing up, so it's, it was a big mental battle to get, get through to the final and to get through that run. And I thank everyone for cheering, my teammates, but also all the kids and the fans who were cheering getting me to that finish line. It's um, yeah, very special to win in Tartsen again. Well done, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> well, great to see you there. The race winner, Jessica Fox of Australia. And uh, well, another dominant performance, even when uh, she's not brought her A game to the competition. Yeah, I don't think any of them really had the runs that they wanted to, but that's also the, the nature and what's great about slalom is that anyone can, you know, show their, their power on the day and, and win a medal. And um, yeah, I think it's, it's incredible to see so many great paddlers and new paddlers in that final. So there we saw the results from that. Women's kite final here in Tarson. Jessica Fox takes the maximum points for the World Cup. Another 60 points to go with the 61 in Prague and in Krakow. Mallory Franklin for Great Britain, backing up a uh, fourth place in the Prague World Cup race to get her World Cup overall campaign back on track. And Victoria Urs, three finals. And, uh, in fact, two finals from the three races, but uh, a strong performance taking the bronze medal. Avi Leifarthy there in shot for the United States of America. Another strong performance for the junior world champion of last year. Yeah, incredible performances. And, you know, the top four or the top five, without their touches, they could have gotten a medal as well. So um, anything is possible here. And it's a, it's a strong podium finish from those top three girls. And, and we'll see what the kayak men can do with three Slovenians in the final. Yeah, no clean runs overall in that women's kayak final. But here are the World Cup standings after three races. Jessica Fox well ahead. Three wins, maximum points ahead of Teresa Fisarova, who missed out on the final today. Victoria Us consistently performing there and moving up the order into third place. Yeah, and I think what's really cool, just a quick note, is that those top six in the world ranking, they also double and do canoe and they do extreme.
Hi, I'm Thomas Appel. I'm coach of the German Counter Federation for the K1 discipline. The gate combination 6-7 looks really demanding. The water in the eddy is changing a lot. You can uh, have a plan, but it may not work. You have to react uh, very instinctively, very fast, uh, and hopefully doing the right decision. Otherwise, you will lose time until gate 10. If you want to win, be sharp, be focused, and uh, do the right thing in gate number six, and you will have a good opportunity to win. Well, we are now shifting our focus to the men's kayak final. And well, after the excitement, it uh, took a little while to get going, that women's kayak final, but uh, it was a tough final, and uh, great to see Jessica Fox taking the honours for Australia. Here are the World Cup standings in this men's kayak competition after two races. Peter Kauser, the local favourite here for Slovenia, and in the final, leading the way ahead of Yui Priskovic, who's also in the final for the Czech Republic, Martin Dugud, and this is out on the final on this occasion. So the start list for the final, remember their reverse order of their semi-final performance, so Giovanni De Gennaro, Italy, who was fastest in the heats and in the semi-final, will go on last. So myself, Andy Madden, will talk you through the action as it unfolds here in this men's kayak final. And a warm welcome back to Callum Gilbert of the New Zealand team. Well, we are ready for the start of competition. And uh, the first competitor to start in this competition, Jakob Grigor of Slovakia. Yeah, good to see uh, Jakob back on the course and leading out this final. Um, it's going to be a really exciting one, and I'm certainly excited to see what goes down. So we know that the fastest raw time in the semi-final was 81.23, super quick. And that, that was from the, uh, well, the Italian Giovanni Di Gennaro. He'll be off later on. But that's the kind of time that people need to set if they want to take gold here in Tartson. Absolutely. I think that's going to be a really tough time to beat. But, oh, Jakob is beautiful around that gate six. Super tight. Really nice round seven. Really putting together a good run here to start off. But, oh, maybe he's picked up a touch there. He has on gate seven. Didn't see that. But uh, a two-second penalty awarded. And, uh, well, the Olympic silver medalist from Tokyo. He was fifth in uh, Rio. He's kind of won the under-23 World Championships two occasions. I think junior World Championships on two occasions. He is absolutely capable of taking the win here today. 100%. You can see they're reviewing that touch now, so we'll, we'll see what happens there. But he's still holding it together pretty well. Nicely through that stagger, keeping the boat moving. Beautiful tight around 16. And now, oh, sorry, 18. Really hard work now through the last couple of downs before the final up and then sprint to the finish. So now this into the upstream gate 21 is where the lactic acid builds. If you can get a bit of boat speed on the exit, even better because that's where you are really running on empty. You cross the line, 86.61. Well, that includes that two second penalty currently given on gate seven. And uh, well, 84 point. Oh, and it's been taken off. So that uh, penalty, 84.61, the raw time. A clean run awarded for Jakob, and here is the uh, slow-mo of gate seven. That was where the penalty was awarded. But yeah, obviously, the, just a bit of confusion there, I guess, from the from the judges or something, because it looked pretty clear on the video, I think. But uh, 84, that's a good time. We saw in the semi-finals there was a, a lot of bunching around that 84, and nice, solid performances. So I think that's going to going to be a good result. Not sure if it's going to be enough to take the lead, but uh, to hold the lead. But it's a great start from Jakob. I'd agree. I think uh, top five for, for sure for Jakob. And, uh, well, he's going to have a long way to the finish line to see whether that's enough. Absolutely, absolutely. And there, you see it in his face in some ways. He's like, he kind of knows it's a good run, but he also knows he's left the door open. That's right. Next up, Super Mario Leitner of Austria. Pretty excited to be in this final, I think. I saw him just before and uh, he was pumped. It's cool. Mario Leitner of Austria made the final in Prague. He finished seventh there, 26th last weekend, so missed the final, but back in the final this weekend. And, uh, well, that makes uh, three finals from his last four major races because he made the European Championship final at the first part of the season. And uh, now 
This is where he just sets off. Make sure he gets his composure as he launches down this big drop here in Tartson. That's it, straight into it. Down into the curler there, lifting up over. Nice onto the edge there. Uh, just a bit held in the middle, but he's done a good job. In nice and high, sweeps it round beautifully in and out there. Yeah, very powerful exit stroke there. That will have uh, launched him now as he heads across into the upstream gate three. It's a good start. Just superb across that wave, yeah, absolutely. Good position on four, that's nice. And he's coming to this tricky gate six. A lot of people have been having a lot of trouble here. Oh, nice. In there, holding the pole, working hard on the exit. That's good. Well, over a second, the advantage on the top section over a very respectable run from Grigor of Slovakia. So Mario Leitner is very much challenging for a place on the podium today. Absolutely, just looks so comfortable through those next few gates. He set this up really nicely through that weird border of 11. Just getting a bit caught up. Oh, he can't quite get back there. Yeah, so he, he knows he hasn't got the gate cleanly, so he goes back and he makes sure that uh, he doesn't pick up a penalty, but that will be very expensive on the clock. Absolutely, you can't be afford to having to take two attempts to get a gate at this level, so good that he's held it together, managed to keep it clean, um, and he'll just be trying to put the rest of the run together and see where it stacks up. So six seconds lost in the middle section, and uh, there's just not enough time to make up any kind of margin at the bottom, but Leitner will be doing damage limitation now. There's still World Cup points up for grabs, and uh, he was uh, sitting nicely in uh, the World Cup standings on the basis of his final in Prague, and uh, now 91.53 second place, and you can just see how it does slip away. One mistake on gate 12, and hero to zero, very quickly indeed. That's it, at least in this uh, in this final situation, you know, the worst you can do is a 10th place, which is still a great result. So you can see the face of frustration, but I think Mario's happy to be out there and, and competing, which is cool. You can see that water there in gate six, really moving around in all sorts of directions. So I think it's really difficult for the athletes to make a plan there um, that's gonna be consistent. You know, you have to really be open and deal with the water you get at the time. And here, this is gate 12, this is where the problem was, he just didn't get across enough for it. Had to recirculate, go back for it, another different angle on it. And yeah, well it was definitely a 50, he definitely needed to go back. Yeah, that's right, definitely a good choice to go back there. I think um, important to point out as well, you know, you can, uh, you do need to have your whole head and part of the boat going through the gate at the same time, but if you do fail to do that on your first attempt, you're allowed to go back around for a second trial like Mario did there, so definitely utilising that rule well because uh, plus six is a lot better than plus 56. Well absolutely, he's still in the mix isn't he and uh, he'll get some valuable World Cup points. As we just saw there, the Slovenian crowd eagerly anticipating. Don't forget we have three Slovenian boats in this 10 boat final but first up it is Mathieu Biazzizzo of France who is the overall World Cup winner of 2016 and uh, a world championship medalist very capable of uh, getting in the mix and upset, upsetting the Slovenian party just a touch on that first gate really unfortunate but really cool to see Mathieu in this final really showcasing the uh, caliber of the French team being you know in their in their B team and still um, in this final and performing really well yeah, gate one is not So finishes the Barbie final drop here in Tartan and uh, goes about to keep the length of the course a little bit longer. Eight last team gates and uh, what here? Well, he's three seconds down. That's actually not bad considering some of the uh, action that we've seen as he comes down the course. Into second place provisionally. Yeah, in a time of 85 um, <clears throat> raw time with that, that touch on gate one, that's, that's a respectable run given the sort of the, the trouble he was having there. He, he did a good job to hold that together. There is our race leader on the left, Jakub Grigar for Slovakia. His time, 84.61. Well, it holds up for now at the top of the leaderboard ahead of Mathieu Biazzizzo of France, Mario Leitner of Austria, but this is gate one. 
Well, at least there's no doubt about the fact that he did hit it. Yeah, that's right. I don't think uh, that was a tough decision for the judges on that one. This was gate six. This was a really good insight. He um, sticks the tail down a bit. Uh, you're right there. Catches the bottom, and then he also happens at the same t time to run out of stroke. That's absolutely right, yeah. Really tricky in there. Um, I think he did a good job to actually recover that, as he did. Looked pretty uh, wobbly there for a bit, so... Yeah, like you say, a bit of uh, damage mitigation on the way down. Well, this is the men's kayak final here. We're live from Tartson in Slovenia. And, uh, well, the pack ground stand waiting for a Slovenian party. And there, Jessica Fox, fresh from winning her race is now consoling her boyfriend who is uh, currently sitting in second place but a little bit of disappointment absolutely yeah i think he knows he had more in the tank next up first of our civilian paddlers this is really exciting i was out there a minute ago and you can just hear the crowd going absolutely wild for the local paddlers so that must be really cool Ula Valant of slovenia goes for gold here down this course and uh, well, he just catches an edge over the drop. He recovers that well. It looked like he was going to have a roll there. Yeah, really great recovery there to get into the gate. Still nice and tight. And now he's got the boat moving beautifully on the back of the wave and great position in three. Yeah, really, really confident. He gave a load of upstream edge there and uh, he knew what line to take. That's it. I think he's done this before. So into this tricky gate six now. Once again, yeah, oh, really nicely done. And even with that little bit of trouble, still point five seven up. Really tight in that, uh, in that gate seven there. So. But uh, looking clean so far, so that's good. Well, the crowd are going wild here as he is clearly challenging for the race lead into the upstream 10, but that's a penalty picked up on 10. Yeah, just a bit tight there and getting a bit stuck on the pole. Maybe a touch on 11 or was, it, was that water? I didn't, didn't see. I think it was on 11, yes. He did take another touch. So suddenly he's gone from challenging the race lead to being very on his back foot. 4.88, the deficit now as he comes through into gate 18. Yeah, really just not quite enough space to keep the boat moving there. He's having to really work for it right around those poles. So good to see him holding it together here and pushing hard to the finish, but I don't think it's the run that he was looking for either. So Jakub Grigal, the race leader for Slovakia at the moment, 84-61, is going to hold on to the race lead after four boats down and uh, only into third place provisionally for Ulan Valant of Slovenia. So Grigar leading ahead of Biazitso and then Valant after four boats down, but six boats still to go in this final and they're the fastest six boats from the semi-final. Yeah, absolutely. There's still some very big names to come and I think uh, some really good times to come too. What's your prediction? What do you think was the winning time going to be in this final? I think it's going to be around about 80, 80 to 81 seconds. Or you think we might see an 80? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it out there. I think we can. Right, well, that's certainly going to be exciting. We'll see if that comes up. What about you? It's a great question. I uh, don't know. My predictions today, I'm not sure they've been so good. Although, um, yeah, no, I think you could be right, but I'm not sure we'll see that 80. Next up, though, Yuri Preskovich. If there's a man who can do it, he might be one of them. Well, that's it. And that will take us to the halfway point in this men's kayak final. The world champion, the Olympic champion, Yuri Preskovich of the Czech Republic. Uh, actually qualified through with a penalty, the only person to do so, and also with a pretty scrappy run on, on his standards. That's right, yeah, he's certainly got some more in the tank and uh, we'll see if he can pull it out for this final win. And to be honest, he's probably my 80 seconds. Yeah, uh, okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of got my, my money sort of secretly on cows there, I think. He, uh, he really knows how to perform on this course, so we'll have to see. Well, next to start. Yuri Preskovich of the Czech Republic, the Olympic champion. He's a two-time world champion, five-time European champion. He sets off here as he goes for gold in Tartson and looking very smooth as he runs into gate one. That's right, and I just love how comfortable he looks all the time. Doesn't matter if it's an Olympic final or World Cup heats, he's just always comfortable. Really nice into that uh, gate three across. Good position on four. And I'll tell you what, he's a man who's comfortable around the poles. Well, it's a brilliant top section. 1.4 up, it looked quicker even than that. Really patient on that gate six, just because he got a bit of funny water and did a great job to hold the position and come out of there nicely. Well, he's had a third and a fourth so far in the World Cup series this season. So he's uh, very strong in the standings, lying second place at the moment behind Peter Kauser of Slovenia. But uh, surely this is a 
very quick run coming together. Oh, absolutely. He's really tight on that next section and just beautiful boat speed through there. Three and a half seconds up. That's incredible. Coming into this sector last upstream here, really tight, great sweep around. He's really putting a run together here. Moving through that last stagger, under the pole, trying to get in the current, keeping that boat moving just a little bit corporate into the last up. Super tight. Well, he got dirty water there, didn't he, on 19 and 20, but surely we're looking at the race lead. Is it going to go under 80 seconds? And it oh, is he's under 80 seconds. 79.79. <laughs> Sensational. That's a great run from Yuri. Wow. So there you go. All of our predictions out the window already. Wow. Well, we're at the halfway point in this men's kayak final, and Yuri Briskovich, the Olympic champion, has set it on fire. Yep, that is a seriously high bar he's set there. So it'll be interesting to see if uh, what the other guys do in, the, in this challenge. You know, I think uh, most of them will be having their plan and just looking to lay down their run. But perhaps some of them will hear that time and decide, you know what, I'm gonna I'm gonna go all out. Well, he didn't really. It, it was just all the way down. He delivered it in a really tidy way. He didn't take many risks, did he? But he delivered. No, you're absolutely right. There was nothing, uh, nothing un just sort of on the edge or anything. He just he was in those good positions, kept the boat moving, and you can see on the slow mo just beautifully around the poles. Well, it uh, will be uh, good in terms of uh, that to liven up the rest of the uh, the final. Still got the fastest five boats to go from the semi-final and some big names to go, but uh, they're going to have to go much faster than anyone managed in the semi-final if they want to take gold. And there is his father and his coach, who is, uh, well, clearly very pleased with that. That's and, right. Uh, let's hope we can catch the interview down at the bottom of the course. That's right, Han. Look at the, the child there, super happy as well. That's awesome to see. Yuri, we've been waiting all year for you to do a <laughs> perfect run today. Was that perfect? Uh, yeah, it was really good. I had really bad flow during the semis and I had to really push hard to make the finals. And I knew that if I get a good water, it can be really fast and I got it. So, uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy and it was a special run for me in Tatsen. Two Slovenians to come. <laughs> the crowd is here behind them. Do you think you've done enough? Well, you never know here, but there are definitely good paddlers and I'm just happy with my performance and I believe it's going to be good enough for a medal. All right, good luck, Yuri. Thank well you. Well, it's great to see Yuri Priskovic there, the Olympic champion, who is our race leader at the halfway point in this men's kayak final. And, uh, well, that is going to be a hard time to beat even for the Slovenians that's right and it's nice to hear him there in the interview he's obviously really happy with the run he uh, went out executed his plan and now I guess it's a it's a bit of a wait but a happy wait I imagine well I think he said he's confident of a medal I yeah. think we can be pretty certain of that yeah. I would say he could be pretty confident of a gold medal because that's going to take something exceptional to beat that absolutely absolutely Having said that, there are some paddlers who can do exceptional things, uh, probably including Peter Kauser and uh, Giovanni De Gennaro. And it'd be interesting to see whether they kind of uh, have uh, picked up that vibe at the top of the course, because it's you're quite isolated at the top of the course and the flat away from the, uh, the amphitheatre. That's right. And like you said earlier, um, it's exactly right. You're up there, you warm up, you go into the start blocks, and it's not until you peel out, look to your left, and you see through that gap at the top of the drop the course, the crowd, the everything. So that's it. It's a, it's a really isolated experience up there, and then boom, you're in the race zone. Well, five boats still to go, and it is Briskovic leading ahead of Grigal and Biedzitzo. And on course now, Benjamin Renier of France sets off on his challenge for the podium. That's it. Another great Frenchman in the final. Nicely down the drop there. Oh, really taking a hurt. He's just slipped off the racing line there, trying to work hard to get back across to that gate one. You can see the power of the water there. And uh, in some ways, that mistake just shows people watching at home just how good the athletes are. They make it look very easy, but the power of the water, as soon as you make a little error, it will bite back. That's exactly right. And that top drop is a prime example. You know, you've got to be right on the position to, to bounce through there well. So we'll get an indication. Look at that, 4.35 down. So one little mistake, and that's very costly so far for Renier of France. Really costly. He's doing a good job, though, holding it together. He's got back on his plan, it looks like, and really moving the boat well. Jumping in high to this gate, 10. Sweeping around. Just looks nice and composed, which is good to see. And I'd be... Uh, you know, there's 
Yuri Priskovic, one of the big things, he's left nothing out there. There's nowhere on the course that he really gave some time away. No, that's right. I mean, it's not often you see a perfect run, but I think his was, was not far off it today. And just losing a bit more time there, Benjamin. Tricky, tricky on that course. So there is a review going on on gate 11, the downstream. There's no penalty showing at the moment, but that's just a routine part of the, particularly in the finals, the video judging and making sure that uh, all penalties are confirmed prior to the, uh, the official posting of the result. Really nice around that last upstream, working hard to the finish. Look at that, 89.01, the time slips away for Benjamin Renier of France, but it's still a respectable performance in fourth place at the moment, but the top three unchanged, Priskovic leading ahead of Rigar, and then Piazzitzo. That's it, that's it, it's a tough final out there, and uh, we've definitely seen a, a sort of a mixture of runs, so uh, just again emphasizing how good Yuri's run was on that. Um, in that first half of the final. So this is a mistake at the top, on the top drop, took a big face fall. You can see him just about disappear under the water there, it just shows the, the volume and the size of the water at the top. And then you can see he lost sight of the, the gate and uh, yeah, slipped away from the power of the water. Still an asterisk showing on his time, it's just that the result is still provisional until the full review of any penalties is confirmed. It was mainly gate 11 that uh, I think the review was being undertaken on. He, he looked uh, he looked pretty comfortable through gate 11 I thought so um, obviously just some kind of routine look there but I wouldn't imagine anything's going to pop up. And he has been given a two second penalty and just checking that at his own gate 11. Well, once again, I better eat my words, but here we're joined by uh, Noah Heger at the top of the course here, ready for his final run. Another younger athlete, age 23. Great to see him in the final. Yeah, very consistent paddler. Sixth at the World Championships last year. And uh, he made two finals in the World Cup Series last year. Only four World Cups in the series last year. And now he goes for Germany. So. Noah Heger, what can he do? Third in the semi-finals. Nice, and he's looking sharp in that first upstream. A little bit caught in the hole, but kept the boat moving and really looks like he's attacking and, and focused on this run. And don't forget, whilst there's been an outstanding performance from the race leader, Priskovic, of the Czech Republic, there's nearly five seconds between him and second place at the moment. Yeah, so the medals are very much still up for grabs. That's right, there's a big spot to um, sort of slot into, but you can see Noah here going pretty well, just getting a bit off there, but working hard to get back into 10. Nice and high sweeps it round, and he'll be coming into this sort of strange water of gate 11. Oh, really tight there. Just wiggling through, seems to have done a good job to get through there. Well, he did well there, didn't he? Because he had a face full of water as well, so he had to uh, stay off the poles, and it seems like he has. There is a review on the gate, but I suspect that is just routine. That's right, really reactive paddling from him. He's really sharp and quickly adjusting to, to the, the changes that are happening on the fly. So the German team having to withdraw from the competition last weekend because a couple of athletes tested positive for COVID. So Noah wasn't able to participate, although he did qualify into the semi-final. And now he's going to stop the clock. It's outside the race lead time, but it is into second place provisionally. And, uh, well, that's a good performance, 83.39. And uh, it is a clean run. There are reviews going on on two gates at the moment. But, uh, well, he is sitting in a strong position in second. Certainly, that's a, that's a very respectable time, especially when you saw... Um, just the run maybe starting to slip and he was really sharp to react quickly and fix those mistakes. You can see that gate 11 there really, really tight. Here's another angle on 11 and uh, yes, the, uh, the water actually hides a little bit and uh, the judges, he's definitely left that one up to the judges to make the decision and a 50 second penalty has been awarded there. Another angle there and unfortunately that will be determined because his whole head is not through the gate line. And uh, so Noah drops down to seventh place, and it is still Priskovic leading ahead of Gariga, and then Biatitso with three boats to go in this men's kayak final. That's right, really unfortunate about that penalty, but I mean, this is why it's so great to have these different camera angles and these video judges. They can, they can uh, look at that from different angles and really make sure they're putting the right uh, penalty on there, making the right choice. Well, the crowd are starting to get ready because we have back-to-back -back home favourites 
Starting off with Martin Srobotnik of Slovenia. That's it. He's uh, put an incredible performance in in the semi-final, so let's see if he can repeat that in the final here. So this is first final of the World Cup season this season, but uh, this the opportunity, and it is a big opportunity because there is a big gap at the top. There might be an outstanding, what we, we might call the gold medal winning run. That's it, and once again, well, like we saw with the other Slovenian, big inside edge on that hole. They're just so confident on this course, which is so good to see. You can hear the crowd going wild. He's in a great position and working his way into this tricky gate six. So he's up on the split by 0.43. Really tight on that gate six. He was patient, but the water just pushing him around. I think gate seven that moved, but I think that was a water splash. So uh, let's watch as he comes into ten. Yeah, nice. Just got a bit hit on the hole there, but managing to get it nice and tight. Working out. Well, he has been given a touch on gate seven that will be reviewed, I'm sure. But uh, you know, the judges are better placed than I am to make that call. Absolutely. Really nice exit there. He's kept the boat moving super well, taking the short line, but just the time slipping away. Three and a half seconds now. Although, like we said before, that still would put him in second place at this, at this rate. Well, he's looking like he is going to challenge for a top three position here. He's not giving up as he's through gate 20. One more gate to go. That's the upstream 21. And then he's just got to dig deep into those reserves as he sprints under the bridge and will aim to stop the clock. He stops it in second place. Wow. So With a touch there, that's uh, another 81 second run with uh, two seconds taking it to 83. That is another great performance from Martin. I think he's got to be happy with that. Let's just wait for these reviews to finish up, but uh, I think that's that's a good contentious run. Well, well done, Martin Srobotnik of Slovenia into second place. And yeah, he could. Here we go. This is gate six. There was no issues on gate six. Um, and uh, just checking that his whole head is inside. That looks fairly comfortable. Yeah, now, this it. is gate seven. This is where he's been given a penalty. And. Uh, just whether I thought that was water when when he did it, but uh, we should wait and see. And yeah, that's it. I mean, it certainly looks like he splashed the pole. It's just whether he's touched it with some part of his boat body or paddle as well. But I'll have to see what the judges decide on that one. Well, here we have the Peter Kauser fan club in out in force and by the busload. They've been arriving here at the venue. This isn't his like local. Uh, club, so they've travelled across the minute to be here and support Peter Kauser, and he will be up next as we wait. Martin Svobotnik has had gate seven removed, so he is strongly now in second place, 81.16, and I think that might be just fractionally faster than the semi-final performance. So just an un unbelievably good day from him today. That's I think he can be really happy with that. Just 1.3 off Yuri's stellar run, so. We'll see what uh, what Peter's got in the tank for us. Two boats to go. Peter Kauser goes for Slovenia. The Olympic medalist, two-time world champion, multiple World Cup and European champion sets off. And uh, well, he didn't get the line right from the uh, outset, did he? No. Running into that gate one. Just a bit buried there in the wave and unfortunately picking up a touch on one. Nice and smooth into three, though. He's working it round, working hard back out over to four. So, I mean... It's going to be really hard to make up that uh, that deficit, especially with the stellar run being put down by Yuri already. But beautifully around gate six, he did a great job there just to keep that under control. Yes, and he has managed to find a bit of time to cancel out that two-second penalty. He's definitely taking the fight still to the race leader, Yuri Preskovic of the Czech Republic. Absolutely, he's keeping that boat moving really well. Really powerful, aggressive. Oh, it just looks like he's having to work for it a bit, but he's still in those good positions. Well, you never rule cows are out, but has he just touched gate 13? He definitely saw a wobble there, but it's just where there is water. Oh, he's definitely paddled into that one. That's going to cost him big time. So Peter Kauser of Slovenia is absolutely not giving up here, but it looks like it is slipping away from him with a touch on gate 1 and gate 15. And gate 13 is being reviewed now as he comes into the final upstream. That's right. It's been a really hard pull now to the finish. It's 80 seconds on the clock currently. What's it going to stop at? 83.94, putting him in third at the moment with a couple of reviews out there, but yeah, probably not quite the run he was looking for. Well, Peter Kauser has definitely got the most noise from the grandstand for today so far, but uh, yeah, two touches, gate 15, gate 1. I mean, it just shows though the, the speed that he had on that run, even though he didn't look super comfortable and 
like he was nailing it the whole way down. He's just, you know, tenth of a second off, uh, or point point one five from Yuri on raw time there. So yeah, the second run under eighty seconds. Yeah, that's right. So he has absolutely shown that he is still a class act as he tries to go for that elusive Olympic gold medal that he's so desperate for. That's right, that's right. So one athlete left to go. It's uh, Giovanni Di Janeiro. He has been first in the heats, first in the semi. Can he make it first in the final with that incredibly fast time flying out there? Well, Peter Cowles has definitely threw caution to the wind after that mistake at the top of the course. and. Uh, Vintage cows are but not quite enough. Here's 13. And wow, there was uh, not a lot of margin there. No, that's that right. Gate. And actually, he has now been given a touch on gate 13. So uh, that moves him down to fourth place, elevates Jakob Grigor back up to third place. But Priskovic leads for the Czech Republic ahead of Srobotnik of Slovenia and Griga of Slovakia with one boat to go. The last boat down, the fastest in the heats, the fastest in the semi, Giovanni De Gennaro goes for gold for Italy. That's it, he uh, has got a nice, oh, just a little bit picked up there as well, but driving into that first upstream beautifully around the pole there, and he's working hard on that exit straight down to two. He made that look effortless. He sure did. He's coming across that way beautifully. Really nice position on three. And he launches his way back out over to four. So we've already had two runs under 80 seconds. And, well, if he wants to take gold here, he's got to go under 79.79. That's it. He's right in touch there. Just five hundredths down on the first split. So he's certainly putting it together so far. Nice under that 8-9 section. Working hard back over to gate 10. Well, he took a silver medal in the first World Cup of the season in Prague. Missed the final last week in Krakow, and now here, he, remember he won this World Cup race in 2019 on this course. No penalties showing, but there is a review on gate nine. Yeah, really tight just through that gate. Uh, was it gate 15, I think, or 14? Nicely through the stagger, though, keeping the boat moving, pulling in high to that gate 18, sweeps straight around. So he's launching out now. He's really got to work for these last few gates to get the boat moving to the finish line. Wow, this is going to be a fast run from De Gennaro of Italy as he comes out of the last gate. It's a great upstream gate, 79.79 the time to beat. He's going to be outside of that, but he is into second place. And uh, wow, what a race. Yeah, great performance there, I mean. 80 seconds, if we'd uh, heard that before the, before the competition, we would have been saying that that was a great run. So, superb to put that down in the final. So, that's provisional result. I have to say provisional, because Giovanni De Gennaro is still a provisional result at the moment. Uh, I don't think there's anything particularly of alarm, but uh, it's just routine for them to just run through any slow motions and specific different camera angles on certain gates. It's it. I mean, he was certainly pretty tight on a couple of those gates, so I think they'll be just wanting to check to make 100% sure he went through and um, see that that time stays. But fantastic run there. I mean, what a final. Well, provisionally, the winner of this World Cup is Yuri Preskovic of the Czech Republic, and Giovanni De Gennaro has been given a 50-second penalty on gate 14, so it is. Martin Srobotnik of Slovenia, who takes the silver, and Jakub Grigar, who takes the bronze for Slovakia. Wow, and I wonder if we're going to get a slow-mo of that. He certainly looked very tight coming out of that upstream 13, so... And I think this is... Uh, this is it, 14. Yeah, really fast flick of the head there, so tough to tell from this angle, but obviously the judges have looked at it from a few and decided that he's uh, not quite managed to get his whole head through there. Either that or no boat. That, that or could no. be the option there for the judges because you've got to have at least part of your boat in at the same time as your head negotiates the gate. And uh, well, disappointment there for Giovanni De Gennaro. But uh, here is our race winner. Yuri, uh, that was a pretty perfect run. And now you've got your first gold medal outside of Prague. Yeah, it's true. I, I've never won a World Cup on a different place uh, than in Prague and I'm super happy I achieved it here in Tats and I love this course and I kind of like the setup of, of today's uh, course. It was very nice, very challenging. You didn't have to push so hard but you had to have a perfect line and I didn't really get the perfect flow in the semis but now in finals uh, it was going and I felt really good and I'm super thankful for being here and standing here right now. Has it been a bit frustrating for you this year, waiting to do that perfect run? Uh, well, 
I was saying I'm waiting for my perfect run. It was going four in Prague, uh, third in Krakow. I was going for two here and then one on the World Champs, but I guess I'll have to change the line and <laughs> keep winning now. <laughs> well, congratulations, Yuri. Thank well you. done. Thank you. Well, we were treated to an outstanding performance there. The World Cup winner from race three, Yuri Priskovic of the Czech Republic. There is the result. And Slovenia get a medal here on their home course. Martin Srobotnik, though, is the winner of that medal. We thought it might be Peter Kauser. He has to settle for fourth place. Jakub Griga of Slovakia takes the bronze. But what a race that was. Yeah, phenomenal, phenomenal. I mean, once again, we saw those penalties proving pretty costly uh, for the likes of Kauza, you know, really fast time, but three touches just, uh, I mean, you've got to be absolutely rocketing to carry that through the podium. Well, in the women's kayak final, we saw that uh, no one quite found the groove to what they found in the semi-final, but that was the opposite story in this men's kayak final. Then in order to get on the podium, you had to deliver something special and Yuri Priskovic. That has got to be what I've certainly seen the run of the year so far. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right on that. I mean, he just, like he said in the interview, he didn't have to work super hard, but he just put himself in the right places on the good positions and made it, made it count for him on the day. That's fantastic. So Priskovic builds a great momentum going into the World Championships, as he said. Fourth in the first race, third in the second race, and now he takes the win. His next race will be the World Championships in Augsburg, Germany. And of course, you'll be able to follow that live at Planet Canoe. And uh, here are the World Cup standings after three races. And it is Priskovic who overtakes Peter Kauza of Slovenia to lead the World Cup standings ahead also of Vit Prindish. But all up for grabs, five races in the World Cup series and double points up for grabs in the final race of the series. But that wraps up the racing here today from Tartsen in Slovenia. We'll be back tomorrow with the women's canoe and the men's canoe semi-finals, nine o'clock Central European time. Then the finals, 11.30 Central European time. And of course, extreme kayak, head-to-head -head racing 4.30 Central European time tomorrow. But uh, a big thank you, Callum, for joining me in the booth. Thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure. And from me, Andy Maddock, it's goodbye. We'll see you tomorrow.